everyone, so today I'm gonna to show you how to get this extremely grungy look. I don't see these around anymore, but it's very Jamie Genevieve 2015 kind of look, that's who I was inspired by. But I used two palettes, I never ever reach for any more, and Urban Decay's uh, Naked 3 and Smoky. So if you have these at home, which I guarantee a lot of people have this one, and a few people have this one, I feel like this is one they kind of died out a little bit. I also got Fuchsia products sent to me so I tried them out in this as I asked on Instagram stories did people want to see what I thought of them. I have used some of the products before but this is just like a very quick little first impressions esque video. So yeah and it's really simple like really really simple. Okay now starting on to the makeup. Um, I look really stupid because my hair is really big so I'm gonna clip half of it back. It's just because I've curled it just then so it's a bit massive. I'm gonna start off with the Infallible Luminizing Primer by L'Oreal. I love this. Two pumps of it I find does the job with if you had the older version which was in like a pearlescent kind of white tube. I preferred that formula more but this does the same job. You just have to use less of it. This is more of an oily formula so just be careful with that. I use my hands because the heat of your hands will actually melt it into the skin a bit better. So once I've applied the primer, because I am going to be testing out the Fuchsia products I was gifted, and um, they came with mineral powders and stuff, so just to give it a little bit more coverage and a little bit more of a glow, I'm going to go in with the Hollywood Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury. I love this. The first day I wore it, I put it all over my skin, and I was so glowy, and it was the worst mistake ever. But mixing it in with Ingots HD Foundation or putting it underneath mineral powder, I think it's lovely because you see the glow. I just kind of add it where I would get glowy. So I'm just adding it kind of all over my face. The only thing I don't like, I like it for myself, the little doe foot applicator, but I do not like that for hygiene reasons of other people. Also, I was thinking if I get near the bottom of my bottle, like how hard is it gonna be to get the product out? So. I will let you know. I'm taking this weird shaped Real Technique sponge. I don't know. I think it was in a collection. It was my mom's and I just stole it. It's not wet though. I would recommend using it wet. I just am too lazy. So I'm just patting this in. If it is wet, obviously it meshes into the skin a bit more naturally and a bit better. You can tell it doesn't give much coverage. It literally just kind of gives a bit of colour into the face. Because as you can tell, I don't put tan on my face. So there's a bit of a difference. I also do this with the other mineral powder I'm using so I know it works with mineral powders. I have used the Fuchsia mineral powders before. I have it in cream and I had it in luscious as well but I ran out of that. Then I'm going to use a little liquid blush. K-pop cloud cream creamy blush in sunset. It's a lot of C's and K's in that word so no wonder I can bloody stutter. This was one euro in pennies and I went to just like go and shop and of course I came home with half the shop. But I seen this and I was like, you know what, I'll try it, it's one euro, I don't care. It's like this orange kind of, it's basically the exact same colour as the packaging. Use so little of this. Literally take whatever that is, like a millimetre I'd say. Put it on one finger. I'm just going to close this up because no one will sit on it or something and it'll just be orange everywhere. And I just take it on the back of my hand and I'm patting it in so that it's all over my finger and not just in one place. I just smile and dot it on. I put it where my cheekbones protrude the most. So I'm just taking my instant anti-age eraser concealer and I've just twisted it up a little bit. I'm popping this underneath the eyes and then anywhere else I kind of want a little boost of coverage. And then I just use the opposite end of the Real Technique sponge and blend it all in. I don't think I really understand the point of this sponge. I like the orange one a lot more like i just don't understand why there's like a chunk taken out here maybe it's to like fit it in there but i think it does the exact same thing if you were to use the round side so i don't know before i move on to the mineral foundation i'm just taking a sephora concealer brush i have the inglot concealers camouflage concealers in a little like palette so i'm just taking the shade 109 and i just need a tiny drop of jaw line because it is very dense of a concealer and i'm going to use this as my eye base the great thing about this brush is very flat top so it'll help me carve out my brows a little bit. I'm going to mark out where my brows go or where I make my brows go. Just bring it down as well because again we're going to use this as an eye base. 
just use an even proportion of duraline to the concealer because too much duraline it'll just become duraline and make it really oily and slip off and then too much of the concealer you won't be able to get it off your brush it's too dense of a concealer and then i just get my sponge again and pat it over but it leaves like a faint line of where i can see where i'm gonna draw my brow above it i got sent the shade luscious and fawn this isn't sponsored by the way it's just the first impressions I this is fawn okay looks a bit like luscious i'm trying to remember i think i might be more of a luscious yeah i'm more of a luscious color so we'll go for luscious then so for the mineral powder then i know how this works and i know it works the best with the fuchsia jumbo buffer they have repackaged this and i have another one in my brush belt for my kit i will be honest i prefer the one i have which has a wooden handle so if you ha can get that get this one but the one I have has a rose gold and black handle, so I'm not sure if they're different. No matter what mineral powder I'm using, I'm using this brush with it. I flip my uh, tub upside down so I don't get powder everywhere. Dipping in and knocking some of it off. A good trick that I learned when I actually worked with Fuchsia, is once you've coated your brush with mineral powder, tap on the table or in your hand, I don't have a table here, and it'll let the mineral powder sink into the brush. Now be careful with this, this does have mica in it. Um, I remember from when I did work there, Mika is a fish scales, I think, or something like that. So it gives an iridescent glow. It's the first product on the back um, and products go in ascending order. I think that's the right word. So the first product that you see is the most used ingredient in the product. Mika will give flashback really bad, like kind of like how SPF would do it. So just be careful with that. I put it on the outside first because that's where you want most coverage considering you've put concealer mostly at the center and then i just pat it down i don't know if maybe it's a little bit too not red toned but it is on the warmer side and you can see it's dulling down the whole glow that i had from charlotte tilbury it's gonna make it a bit more natural and um, you have to kind of pat near your nose and stuff because you can't get in there I just think it gives such a lovely finish. See if you're running late or just running to the shop or doing like nitpicky errands, it's the best thing. Literally rub it on, big huge brush, and you're good to go. I'm gonna take my favorite under eye setting powder. This is the Inglot 503 powder. It's just a cream. And I lightly set this under the eye. I kind of sweep it under because if you do pat it, it'll tend to be like really bright. And you'll just look very awake. And then I'm just patting this on the top to set the lid. A lot of people um, use their base wet, but I just can't do it. My eyelids crease too fast. Then I got a mini pot of the rice powder. So this is only two grams. Um, I think this is the setting powder from what I believe. This is the only thing I don't like about their packaging. Like the, the size of this and the peel here is stuck in this circle with the tiniest gap. Like how the fuck am I meant to get this out? Like definitely don't even bother with your hands just get straight in there with the tweezers because you're definitely never getting into this with this i'm just gonna put this on the back of my hand because the pot's not that big and my brush is a lot bigger oh i'm just gonna pat my brush in and i'm just gonna use this as if it's a setting powder so i will put it in my t-zone underneath where i highlighted on my chin around my nose and just whatever's left right it probably had more of an effect on top of liquid foundation because that's not powder whereas i have mineral foundation already on but sure i'm so glowy underneath maybe i do need a little bit better yeah it's that i don't really think it mattified me really at all but it is a loose better so i can't really see the difference <laughs> i'm gonna go in with the bella pierre cosmetics uh mineral bronzer in the shade starshine i got this sent to me as well so i thought i'll use it in a video for the first time i actually correction i used this once and i found it very dark so i'm gonna take it with a lighter hand so i'm just taking my penny's brush that i always use it's just this domed one and taking a tiny amount because I was very dark last time I think. I love the tip of this because the tip will fit me right into the contour and then I can soften it down because it's fluffy. And then I bring up my temples, along my cheek and on my forehead. A lot of people actually don't like uh, bronze on their forehead but I think you actually look weird if you don't do it. Like you look incomplete. So I'm doing it. Like the first and second ingredient is mica and titanium dioxide. So this would have really bad flashback, I'm assuming, because them two products give you the flashback. Well, we'll see when I take photos how well it shows up. And I bring it down my neck a little bit. And also, don't forget the nose. 
one of the other products I got sent was the mineral blush and this is the one gram one so it came with the rice powder a three gram uh, mineral foundation and this did it come with anything else I'm not sure and it has another stupid little sticker so I'm gonna have to use tweezers to get this out too oh that one was easy though by the look of it it looks like it has a little shimmer in it which would be nice it's quite frosty though I don't know how I feel about frosted blushes but it is a mineral powder and the top ingredient is mica or mica however you say it well that is lovely really subtle I apply it at the lowest part of my cheekbone and bronzer and I just swoop it up then and then don't forget the little nose as well if you don't like blush obviously go a little bit lighter but I just think blush finishes a look it's actually lovely I wasn't expecting that because I do just like the handiness of compacts whereas this is actually really nice it's actually it's a lovely little size as well because you can pour it into the lid and just my brush fits perfectly in it so I'm very impressed then for contour I'm taking one of the pennies brushes again from the same set as the bronzer one and just Inglot 515 contour I'm just popping this right at the back of my kind of near my hairline back on my cheekbone tiny bit goes a long way with this otherwise you become very ashy very quickly now to move on to the brows I am normally a Inglot 16 brow gel gal but I used this last week and I forgot how much I used to love Anastasia only issue is it dries out so effing fast like the Inglot brow gels I could go the whole pot without using Jerline this I think I got about halfway through it and it was crusty I still have to use Jerline today with it but I do it anyway so so because I have a baseline with concealer, don't mind me, I'm just locking down while mixing, um, that'll help me guide to where I fill in my brows. I find it a lot easier on this brow to do my brow and then this one I always fuck up so don't mind it. I'll go back in with the concealer and correct it. Just make sure my brush is flat again otherwise you can't get your hair like strokes. So I'm doing a baseline following the concealer I have down already. My brows are very straight, so I am going to make them a hell of a lot more curved. If you watch any of my videos, I literally do the same technique all the time. And then I'm going to curl it around at the top as well. The one thing Anastasia has above Inglot is it's more pigment, so you don't need as much of it. Um, I also completely forgot highlighter there so I'm just gonna add some quickly before I go into the eyes in like the worst possible shot ever but I'm taking light cheese peach glow it's like a loose highlighter I uh, use very little of this because it is very glowy so I'm using a small like tapered fluffy brush and I'm just popping that on the cheekbones so I'm reaching between two Urban Decay pads I'm going in with the MAC 217 brush and I'm using the shade Nooner from the Naked 3. Just remember if you haven't touched these pads in a long time like myself they do produce quite a lot of uh, dust and kickback. So I'm just putting like a C shape on my eye and then I bring it up slightly more to the centre and now I'm just teasing it upwards so I'm almost using whatever's left on the brush to soften it out before going with my transition shade. Bearing in mind I have a lot of scars on my eyebrows so they don't blend. Like you can even see on this side I have a scar here somewhere and it's making my blend look shite and it's literally the worst thing of life but I gotta get over it. And then I'm dipping into the smoky palette and I'm using the shade Combust. And I'm using this on a 6SS brush from Inglot. This will just soften it right down. I'm placing it on where I tease the shadow. So it's not going on too pigmented because remember this is a cool tone cream colour so I don't want to actually use it as a base. And then I just go back in with Nooner and darken it up and I'll just keep doing that for a few more steps just until I get to the right tran like transparency that I want it. I'm just going to do it underneath really quickly, same colours. I bring my shadows underneath quite low because I have quite liney eyes and I it's a great technique for hiding your under eye bags. So it's quite harsh there and then I get combust. And soften it again and then I'm just patting Nooner on the outer corner because I feel like there wasn't enough product on the outside. Uh, I don't wear kill tones at all that's why I want to do something a little bit different almost to test me. Then I'm going to take this little fuchsia brush and um, it doesn't have a name 
just a tiny little socket brush it is white and um, mine's just black because or brown because i've used so much dark colors on it but i'm taking the shade whiskey from the smoky palette and i'm going right in the crease this is such a tiny little petite brush so anything with this shape it's perfect i'm not using it to blend i'm almost just placing it on so once it's looking really harsh just go back in with the same brush that you used beforehand and soften it down. I have no product on this. If you need a little bit, dip into a or tiny bit and then place it where your lightest patch is. So if you have maybe a patch that you kind of didn't put too much brown on, start there because then it'll pack it on. Just using a very light hand because cool tones, I am afraid of them. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. I never used to, I never understood why everyone loved 2 and 7 during like the YouTube 2013 days. And I bought it with like my pocket money and I was like, why do people like this? It's shit. But only now do I appreciate it. It's a really good little brush. I actually need to get another one, but it's like 17 euro and I don't know. That's a lot for brushes, I always think, especially when Real Techniques have very similar ones. But I feel like this is blank canvas, but it could be any company. I think 100% I can bet my life on it with blank canvas. The name is completely rubbed off. It's just a tiny little socket brush. Again, it's white, so if you are looking for it, it's white. So I'm taking Black Heart from the Naked 3. This is a black with like little red flecks on it, so it is actually quite nice. To be honest, do you ever see the red flecks? No. Um, the best black eyeshadow is 100% Blackout from the Naked 2. It's like the only eyeshadow I use at Naked 2 as well now. So I'm patting this on in a diagonal shape. So it's starting from the outer corner, just on the lid though, not actually taking it off into the crease pattern on because I don't want any fallout to fall especially these cool tone colors you'll look pretty dead so so once I've got that in like a shape that I want it I'd literally just go back in with the little brown brush I was using and soften the black down and I'm gonna take the Mina or 3 Ina I don't know which one it is it's just an eye primer so I'm taking it on the back of my hand just a tiny bit. I'm using it almost like Ingla Eyeshadow Keeper. The only thing about this is it is got a colour base to it. So it is quite light and creamy. But I'm just using it little pattern motions on a little flat Coastal Science brush. And then I'm patting it on at the front. Almost very roughly in a half cut crease. Not doing it too much because I want it to be more faded than anything. I don't want a half cut crease. And then I'm taking off the excess because it gets a bit obviously with dark colours. It's obviously going to get a bit more murky whatever's left I'm fading up over the crease just a smidgen and I take 124 from Inglot it is not a pigment you would think to go with this it is a kind of golden pigment but I love it nice little grungy eye like you can see the half cut crease it gives my eyes the openness of a half cut crease plus I kind of like the smudgy glitter look that's in at the minute a lot softer and it kind of just emphasizes your eyes without overwhelming them and I'm just doing a little half line like a smoked outliner because I think a wing would look too weird for such a grungy look so for lashes I'm just taking the essence get big lashes it's the waterproof one I love this the only thing is it's the hardest mascara ever to get off I'm gonna go in with my lashes now i'm using sosumis in milan's I love these i think they're so flattering uh for any eye shapes especially if you are smaller like my eyes but i'm just gonna pop the lashes on really quickly obviously the glue is gonna dry um i recently got this it's the shade cappuccino by rim it's like cool tone which i thought perfect for this look nice and grungy so I'm just going to use one that's old as anything but I found it recently and for a pale nude it's the, one of the palest and the best. It is one of the Topshop lipsticks. I bought this when Zoella raved about like an orange one. I think it was called Morange or something years ago and I got it in the shade Nevada. She did talk about one of these I think it's in the colour Saint and it's so pale it's like foundation lips but I'm going to go for this one. They are a creamy finish so I use it to smudge into the liner. And then Fuchsia also sent me their vanilla lip gloss in the flavour or smell or colour, I don't know, cookie. It's like a kind of, it's not clear, it has got a bit of a colour, it's like a kind of goldeny brown. 
smells unreal i don't really like the applicator it's one of them flat ones i just don't personally like them it has a slight glow golden hue you can't see it too much so if you don't like all over shimmer it's nice because you see it but it's not on your face it's comfortable to wear. I don't know if that's maybe the lipstick I have underneath. It's a creamy formula, but I have no issues. It's not sticky at all. The closest thing I can actually relate it to is like a lip oil. It's not even as sticky as a lip balm. It's like a lip oil. Like there's no tack to it at all. Even touching it, it almost feels like water. So if you do not like sticky glosses at all, definitely go and get this. And um, they have loads of colors. I got cookie and I'm really excited because I got one of the nudes. I was watching some of the other people's stories and they got more like bright colours that I know I would never wear. That is the finished look. I'm just going to take my hair down. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and all that jazz. And you can follow all my social media. They'll be linked in the description along with all the products that I use and brushes. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>